Hey guys, Christina here with One Creative Direction. How are we doing? Um, we are going to do a video in my living room today. Uh, so I see a lot of people asking about, you know, how to store their art, how to transport their art, etc. So I'm going to show you how I do it. Um, and, you know, maybe you can, you know, adjust it for, you know, what suits you. Uh, but this is what works for me. Um, I keep my art in these containers in between shows uh, in my spare bedroom, but I just had a show, so I just brought it in the living room. So I thought it'd be easier to do it in here, kind of show you how I do it. So keep in mind it's how I do it, and yeah, hopefully this helps somebody. So let's get down to business. Okay, I'll show you a few containers here. This is my coaster container that I made up, and um, it's essentially not it's not using the same poster board that i show um in between each of my paintings um, this is a same thickness of poster board but it's got like a a coating on like a protective coating on the outside of it so it's a little more durable than just the paper poster board at dollar tree i actually purchased this poster board at walmart um, and when i go over to this other container i'll show you uh, a piece of that um, but basically I just uh, dimensioned it all out for what I needed. I do a lot of these um, a lot of these coaster sets. Uh, so most of the squares are so those slide out really easy. And then you can see I have the uh, ceramic square and hex coasters along the side there. And let me tell you how much faster it is for me to, unpack my coasters now that I have this uh, container. Um, it used to take me forever because I would have each one of them individually wrapped so they didn't scrape against each other when I was transporting. And now I just pop them out and, and basically under two or three minutes, they're all out of here. Uh, so really, really improved not only the transportation, but the packing and the unpacking because I could pack this up just as fast as I can unpack it. Um, and it's essentially just one of those under bed storage um, on wheels. Um, I already had this one here, so I just thought, well, I'm just going to use this. Uh, so, yeah, and then again, basically just glued uh, some fleece material around the edge to protect it. Um, I try to protect everything uh, from scratching, rubbing, any kind of abrasiveness. So, so yeah. There's that one. I'll take you over here <clears throat> and show you the poster board. And then one other container. So yeah, this is the poster board. I got it from Walmart. I think I cut this small piece off of here. But it's got grid lines on it. I don't know if you can see that, but it's got little grid lines. It does make it a lot easier to cut it. Um, but yeah, you can see the protective coating on that. So this one's kind of a mess, so don't pay too much attention to it. But you can see that I basically cut out um, a bunch of uh, sections and they're all a little bit differently sized. You can see this one has a few more sections in it. Uh, so this is kind of for my miscellaneous odd shaped items um, that I don't really have any other way to pack them. Um, so you can see I have a lot of extra space in here. That's why there's so much packing material. The vases, I like try to put all of them in there that are the same height. And then you have room to stack other stuff on top of here. Um, so basically I just configured it for, you know, the items that I had and then allowed for some, you know, different shaped items. Like this is mostly stuff that I don't do a lot of. It's like one off type of stuff. It's not like I, I do these all the time. It might be like thrift store finds or whatever. So I got these boxes that I do some picture frames and such. So yeah, just basically configure this with all different sizes of compartments to fit like miscellaneous type stuff. And I have one other container that's my setup that's pretty much set up the same way. And it's kind of a mess. It's got a bunch of jewelry and stuff on the top of it, so I won't show that to you. Um, but yeah, it's basically set up the same way. And that's my setup container that I call it has all my tablecloths and everything that I need to set up my booth, hooks, all kinds of stuff. Um, and I just basically, same concept as the vase one, 
just different size compartments to fit my stuff in and keep it separate um, to make it easy to access, pack and unpack. So, yep, that's it for that part. All right, so let's start with the big stuff. Um, currently, the biggest uh, paintings I have are 24 by 36, and I have two of them. And I'll show you how I transport those if I take them with me um, when I go, but I'll show you that um, towards the end of the video. Uh, but everything else smaller than those two um, fit in here. And honestly, those I think will fit in here. Uh, this is more than 24 inches wide, um, but it's too tall to fit into the back of my SUV. So I have to put them, I basically just lay those on top. Um, so these black containers with yellow lid, you can get them pretty much anywhere. Um, Costco, Sam's Club, um, all of the home improvement stores have them, um, but I've found that Costco and Sam's Club are probably the cheapest. Um, and these are nice and deep, wide, um, so I find that they work better. Now, I did purchase one that was longer than this, but it did. I took it back. It didn't really work very well. So let's get started. So what I do is um, I do a lot of wood. Um, canvases, various um, surfaces. So uh, for most of my art, I put them back to back. So I, even though I finished the back, so you can see these two crosses, they're finished. I will put those back to back and I try to make sure that my hanging hardware is not rubbing against the one that I'm putting it back to back against. So you can see those two are in there back to back and I basically take uh, poster board, the thick corrugated poster board that you can get from Dollar Tree. Uh, maybe there's someplace else cheaper, um, but basically it doesn't matter white or black, but it's it's the thick corrugated. It's not the thin sheets of, of poster board. So I buy those and I cut them into sizes. Um, in this case, I think I, for most of these in this one, I cut in half. And then I basically just take um, I had a ton of fleece here that I was planning on making blankets with and I just it sat here for years So I just basically cut it and glued it to the poster board um, It's really nice. It doesn't leave any fuzz on your artwork and it protects it. It's super soft It doesn't leave marks if you're resining or coating it So I basically just have one in between if I can put the paintings back to back I do that. You can see these are the same size. I put them back to back. Um, so yeah, you can see how everything is just kind of separated in here. And I try to keep my hanging hardware, you can see, out of the way. If you don't put hardware on yours before you sell it, yeah, you don't have to worry about that. Um, so here's another one. This is Sorry about that, folks. I'm trying to hold the camera and film. So this is basically what I call 12 inch or smaller. Um, so same concept. You know, I try to put the same sizes back to back. I have a divider in between each set of paintings. I have some wood rounds here that are 12 inches. I have those back to back. Um, so yeah, so you can get the concept. Um, I did sell quite a few, so I have a lot of extras in the end there. Uh, but yeah, you can see. How nicely they don't touch each other um, to me there's no harm in putting them back to back if you have a reason why you wouldn't want to do that then you would just have more dividers and probably be able to get less in here because the dividers take up space as well so those are my 12 inch or smaller um, I do do a lot of wood rounds um, and I had gotten this container this round container it fits up the 18 inch rounds and I just basically same concept just stacked on top of each other instead of uh, side by side standing on their sides so yeah we just divider in between each one i make sure i put face to face and back to back um just like in the other containers and let me pause this for a minute and we'll go over and I'll show you the large ones. Okay, so here's the two large paintings I mentioned. Um, so basically same concept. Um, um, on this one, I'm just wrapping it completely in fleece on the front. 
and then tucking it uh, the edges in the back side here and then just laying this back to back um, same as all the others and then I just lay this flat um, with this this painting here up um, on top of all my other containers in my vehicle and they don't get damaged that way um, so that's that's all for this video it's kind of a quickie just to go over you know some some ideas um, so real simple um, you don't have to use fleece um, and you don't have to use poster board. Those are just things that, um, it was the most inexpensive for me. I had the fleece here, um, so I didn't have to buy anything. You could use something else that's not abrasive. Just keep that in mind that you don't want something that's going to uh, scrape against your paintings, especially if you're doing, using a top coat, um, especially resin. Um, I use bright tone, so it's similar. You don't want things, you know, scratching against it. Don't leave a mark on your, on your artwork. And you definitely don't want to place bubble wrap directly against anything that you've top coated. It will leave marks. Um, now I do wrap purchases in bubble wrap, but I use tissue paper first against the actual item, so it doesn't leave the bubble um, dots on your piece. Um, so hopefully this information helps everyone. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Please like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Like the video. Appreciate you guys watching. Um, catch you on the next one. Bye now.